We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's a bit gammy. <laughs> ah, it's it, to be honest, it's running over my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to another quick car review. In this series, what we do is we tell you about the car, what you need to know, and a little bit extra. I'm Chris and this is the BMW 4 Series, or as the enthusiasts call it, the G22. Let's talk about the elephant in the room and no, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about the BMW Signature Grille, and it's larger than life. I mean, look at the sheer size of it. It's massive, and it took the automotive world by storm. It was a 50-50 divide, whether we like it or we don't, and we'll hear a divisal, we're not sure yet. So moving away from the front grille, we've got so much more to talk about. We've got the sharp LEDs at the front with their attractive design. We've got clean and muscular curves that flow towards the rear buttress where we see some inspiration from the new 3 Series. And we also get our first taste of the M kit. So with this car, we have the sort of M performance parts attached, and that gives us these sharp black alloys with larger blue brake calipers behind. We get a cheeky little M Sport badge, as we've got to tell people what we have, right? We've got the side skirts, and we've got some more inside, including an M Sport steering wheel. So before we move inside, I just want to show you a few quick things here. So this car comes with the full 360 camera. And while some cameras are really obvious, like the one here, there are some that are really well hidden. Come follow me to the back here and I'll show you. If you see here, now I love this, is that the camera itself, instead of being popped somewhere underneath here and it pops down, it's popped right here underneath the BMW logo. How cool is that? So enough about the exterior, let's uh, show you what it's like inside. And I'll just grab that for me, thank you so much. And uh, so we opened the door, I was pleasantly surprised actually with the comfortability of the car. I thought being a bigger guy, this would be quite, uh, quite tough for me. But in all fairness, doing the wiggle test, it uh, still fares quite well, thanks for that. So we sit straight away, digital dashboard right in front of here. Crisp, clear, love it. To the right, we've got the infotainment system, and this is sort of where the fun stuff happens. So what makes this infotainment system really fun, actually, is the fact that I don't actually have to use my fingers half the time. So instead of getting it messy with my fingers here, I can control it with my own fingers. So I just simply, like that, to turn the volume up, that way to turn it down. If I turn it up all the way and I do that, it goes off. I may look like a weirdo with the lights, but I'm actually controlling my infotainment system, excuse me. So moving away from the fingerprint magnet of an infotainment system is the center console, nice and clean. We open it here to reveal a cubby with a wireless phone charger, a USB port, and two cup holders. Love the design here. But the fingerprint magnet kind of comes back here surrounding the gear lever. Where it goes missing though is around here with all our buttons to control the infotainment system. Control it by the dial, press all the buttons, squiggly like that. And then we've got this cluster here. Engine stop start button, drive mode selector, parking brake, and my personal not so favorite option is the engine off. I get it, it's good for the environment, but when I'm at the lights, especially here, when my AC goes off, I'm not a big fan. As it is a two-door coupe, you've got four seats, and there are two in the back here, but I don't think I'm gonna give you the pleasure of watching me try fold myself into. You know what, I'll, I'll try it. Let's just move the cameraman's bag quickly and let's try and squeeze in here, shall we? Because if I'm honest, this is reserved for the children, if anything. So I'm gonna pull it back. Got good headroom though, so that's nice. And we'll wait for the seat to come back because it's powered. And as I said, not bad headroom actually back here. And now this is where my legs start to disintegrate. Yeah, I can feel it going over my shoes. Oh, it actually mem memorizes that I'm actually here, so that's quite a nice safety feature, actually. As for the boot, you've got three options to open it. One inside the car, one outside the car, and one on the key fold. But no, I'm gonna open it from here, because what I love is that it's powered. See, up it goes, nice and easy. And you can see up to 440 liters of space. You've got plenty of room there for water bottles, bags, all our equipment in the back here. Also automatic, press it, press a button, down it goes. And if you want, I don't know why you want to do this, but you can stop it in various other height locations. So if you maybe got something a bit smaller that you want to sort of hoist up, you can do it. And then it's easy as just pressing again and up it goes again. So put it down, you can do it both ways. So under the bonnet, we have a two liter twin power four cylinder engine. 
It generates over 250 horsepower. 250 is a 280. Two liter four cylinder twin power engine that generates over 250 horsepower. It's mated to an eight speed automatic gearbox and all that power is sent to the rear wheel. So from a driving point of view, most will shy away when they hear two liter turbo or four cylinder engine thing is too small, but with 250 plus horsepower, you've got more than enough in this car. And uh, you put your foot down, you can really, really go. I love the steering in this, it's light, this is, it's responsive. The suspension's a bit stiff, but what do you expect from a sports coupe? The other great thing is that you've got three selectable drive modes. So what we have here is your Eco Pro. So if you want more fuel efficiency and a more eco-friendly drive, we press that. Press of a button, it changes instantly. Comfort, if you want more of a comfortable ride. But of course, personal favorite and probably what everyone's asking here is sport mode. Now, when you press it, as he said, literally the car changes in the press of a button. You put your foot down and the engine sort of comes to life. So prices start at 227,000 dirhams and that'll be for the 420i. If you want to upgrade to the 430i like we've got here with the MK and everything, this is 283,000 dirhams. What are our final thoughts on the car? Well, seeing as everyone is so obsessed with the front grille, they kind of miss the point. This is a driver's car and that's what BMW build. They build a driver's car and this is a driver's car for you. And that about wraps up our quick review. If you're looking for a new or used car, you can check out over 25,000 for sale under Bizzle right now. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.